Good day. In this video, we're going to try and show you how to solve cubic equations with inspection. Remember that if you get a cubic equation like quadratic equations, you take everything to one side where the x squared or the x cubed is positive and equate everything to zero. It was done in these four questions already. Please remember that this introduction to this video is the key to everything that follows. Since grade 9, we've taught you that if they tell you to simplify binomial with a trinomial, you will times this x with this x squared, the x with a 3x, and the x with a minus 4, then the 1 with a x squared, the plus 1 with a plus 3x, and the plus 1 with a minus 4. You must now see something very special happening here. If you multiply this x with the x squared, you're going to get x cubed. x with a 3x, you're going to get plus 3x squared x with a minus 4 is a minus 4x, plus 1 with the x squared is plus 1x squared, the 1 with the plus 3x is plus 3x, and the plus 1 with the minus 4 is minus 4. Now a grade 9 can do this, but what you've never seen, or what you might not have looked for, is what I want to show you. As you'll see there is one x cubed here, there are two x squared answers, and then there is two x answers, and one no x answer. And that is the key to this video. The final answer will have this x cubed that we're here in the beginning. We'll have this minus 4 in there. The two x squares will add up to be plus 4x squared. And the two x's will add up to be minus x. Please stop the video and make dead sure you have this under control. Here is our first cubic equation that we want to solve. The first rule that I'm not going to go into this on this video is we first have to take everything to one side where the x cubed is positive. Then we put it in descending order, x cubed, x squared, x, no x, equals to zero. This specific problem could have been solved by grouping. But I'm not going to do this in this video. I will make a video solving cubic equations, easy equations. Then I'll show you other routes. But we want to practice inspection today. The first thing you're going to do is rewrite this in function notation. Then you're going to take this minus 4 and write down his factors here. Minus 1 or plus 1, minus 2 or plus 2, minus 4 or plus 4. They're going to help us now. The factor theorem says that if you replace that x, that x, and that x with the proper factor, then the answer popping out of here would be zero. This you will do on your calculator, not a lot of writing. If you now take this plus one over here and plug it in here, and then the minus one plug it in here, and then the minus two and plug it in here, you will find out that when you put in a minus one everywhere in the place of x, it will end up giving you a naught. If it doesn't give you a naught, that's not the one you were looking for. So you take one of these numbers at a time, plug it in the place of x, and go on until you get a naught. Don't get a fright of these words now. It just means, it says here, minus 1 is one of the roots. It just means, I put in a minus 1 everywhere in the place of x, and it ended up giving me a naught. Now what we do is we say that, so x plus 1 is one of the factors. If you don't understand the words I'm using, you just write the bracket, you write the x, change that sign, write that 1 in there, close the bracket. Then this will be, your first factor. So here is our original question. You write this factor that you just worked out, bracket x plus 1, close the bracket, start a new bracket and make a little bit bigger bracket for me because I need where I had two guys in here, I'm going to have three guys in here. So I call it small bracket, big bracket. Right, so finding the first factor was easy now. Now just watch what happens. The next part is even easier. You ask yourself, this x I call it first times first must give me first. I do it down here. I say x times x first times first will give me first. So x times x squared gives me that guy. Then last times last must give me last. So this number times this number must give me that number. And that is then minus 4. Then I just, I would usually just draw a little line here and put an x because I need to find this. So I've got my x squared already, I've got my rear number, I just have to find out what this number is, and I'm finished with this question. 
you know, to find the value of this quotient of x, the thing in front of this x. This is the nice part. You can either use the plus 4x squared to get there, or the minus x. It's your choice. I now decided to go with a plus 4x squared. So I wrote here, a plus 4x squared must be generated from what we said in the beginning of the video. So I'm going to times this x with which one of these three to get an x squared. This x with this x will generate an x squared. And this plus 1 with this x squared will also generate an x squared. What I then do is somewhere here next to the question, I write down my plus 4x squared because that's what I need to generate. If you look over here, you'll see there's a plus x squared already. So this answer and this answer together must get me to plus 4x squared. So I already have a plus x squared from there, but I don't know what that number is yet. But this number that I'm going to write in here, combined with this 1x squared I already have, must get me to 4x squared. That means it must be a plus 3x squared. So this bend here must get me a plus 3x squared. So I write a plus 3 in there. Just wrote here, the 4x squared must now be generated. So the two answers together must give me this plus 4x squared. Now don't be too stressed. After you've written this number down, it might even have been wrong. We now check if the two sums together gives me plus 4x squared. So I take that number times that one is plus 3x squared. That gives me a plus 1x squared. Yes, together it does give me the plus 4x squared. Do not worry about the minus x. He's already covered. Stop the video and get your brain around this. So let's, say, let's see what your whole sum would look like. Firstly, you'll have your equation in front of you. You'll take everything to one side where the x cube is positive, put it in descending order, equate it to zero. Then you'll use the factor theorem to find your first factor. Then you'll write your factor down and your big bracket next door. Then you'll say first times first must give me first. That's where that x squared came from. Last times last will give me last. That's where the minus 4 came from. Then we generate this number by choosing either the x squared or the x. Then we work out the plus 3 in front of the x. Then we factorize this part further into two factors if it wants to or can. Then you get your answer here. From here, x is equal to minus 1. From here, x equals to plus 1. And from here, x equals to minus 4. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. I'm going to run through two more examples with you quickly. Here we have a cubic equation. We take everything to one side where the x cube is positive and equate it to 0. Then I write down the factors of 16. I never write down too many. Usually plus and minus 1, plus or minus 2. By that time you have an answer. You plug in the minus 1 everywhere in the place of x. You see it gives you 27, so it's no. I'm doing this on my calculator. Then I put the 1 everywhere in the place of x. Gave me a 5. Put the minus 2 in the place of x. Got a 3, 2. It's not working. Put a 2 in there. I got a 0. So x minus 2 is my first factor. You must do this yourself, please. Now here is our question. and We're ready to go. I just move my equation down, put my factor down, then we would say first times first will give me first, that's where the x squared came from. Last times last will give me last, that's where that guy came from. Put my x down with a little stripe in front. Now you either choose a naught x squared or minus 12x to work with. I choose the minus 12x. Let me just explain to you, if you rewrote this equation, there was an x cubed, there was no x squared, was a minus 12x and a plus 16. So I'm going to go with a minus 12x. Now you ask this x times which one of these three guys will give me an x. And then this minus 2 with which one of these three will give me an x. So this x with this 8 will give me an x. And this 2 with this x will give me an x. Like I say, I write it on the side here. I'm going for a minus 12x. That x over here times the minus 8 will give me a minus 8x. 
How do I go from minus 8x combined with what will give me a minus 12x? So that will be a minus 4x. So I need to generate another minus 4x here. So it will have to come from these two. So then I write a plus 2 here. Now at this stage a lot of people here write a minus 4. Just don't worry what you write. Now check if the two sums together gives me minus 12x. So I times that x with minus 8 is minus 8x. And that minus 2 with a plus 2x gives me minus 4x. Together it gives me a minus 12x. You have to do this checking because your brain lets you down sometimes. Please stop the video and get your brain around up to where we are now. Let's now look what your question would look like that you will answer. You'll have the original equation with or without this piece. You will find your first factor with the factor remainder theorem. Find your big bracket and work out what this x value in quotient of the x value is. You will factorize this trinomial further if you can. Then you'll write the values of x. Now you can even check your answer by taking this 2, placing it in place of x everywhere. You'll see you're going to get a naught. Then you can take that minus 4 of yours, put it everywhere in the place of x, and you'll also see you're going to get a naught. Or you can check if naught x squared wo works. You can take that x times that x gives you an x 2x squared. Minus 2 with x squared is minus 2x squared. gives you naught x squared. It also works. Really understand this technique. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. We taught you the sum and difference of two cubes in grade 10 already. So let's see if this technique of ours will work on this cubic equation. Just remember, if they give you something like this, it actually means there's no x squared and no x. I get my factors of 8, which is 1 and 2, plus or minus that. Plug it in the place of x every time. Work out the equation until I get a naught. I find my first factor, x minus 2. Big bracket. First times first gives me first. Last times last gives me last. Choose if you want to work with naught x or naught x squared. I chose naught x squared. This x times that x will give me an x squared, and this x times this x will give me an x squared. I've got a minus 2x squared already over here. I need to find out what do I need extra to get to naught x squared. So this one times this one is minus 2x squared. So that one times that one must give me a plus 2 over there. You can check it. Minus 2x squared plus 2x squared gives me naught x squared. In this case, x equals to 2 will be my only answer. You don't have to do this, but using your discriminant and taking this information and plugging it in here, you get a minus 12. Your discriminant may not be negative. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy maths.